From the time he was a young boy, Doug DeBoer knew what he wanted to be, a teacher like his mother, Viola. Doug did very well at school. All the years that he went to school, did well in college. After graduating, Doug began a teaching career. His younger brother, Dave, remembers. I just assumed he would probably be in education most of his life, be a teacher or an administrator, but uh, life certainly took a turn for him. It was 1975, and Doug was shipped off to the Vietnam War, where he worked on the front lines as a medic, tending to the sick and wounded. But Doug was also sick and wounded, suffering from a mental illness, schizophrenia. When you're starting to suffer from the devastation of schizophrenia, to be put on the front line in Vietnam, I imagine it must have been devastating to him. After returning from Vietnam, Doug was committed to a veteran's hospital. We knew that he needed some psychiatric help. There he was tied down. You'd go to visit him, but he wouldn't talk much. And he was just highly medicated there. When he came back, he was just like a zombie. He, he, he wasn't a person. After being released from the hospital, Doug was reduced to taking a janitorial position at the college where he'd studied to be a teacher. But he couldn't handle the job. And then one day, Doug boarded a bus in Billings, Montana, and disappeared. We had no idea where he had gone. We had no idea. At first, you kept thinking, oh, he'll come back. But then it got to be the holidays and no word, no, nothing. Two and a half years later, Doug was still missing. It was 1983, and the DeBoer family had been invited to visit friends in California for Christmas. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I don't want to go there. Viola had not planned on accompanying Dave and his family, but at the last minute, for some unknown reason, she changed her mind. It was very strange that mom changed her mind because that was not something that she would normally do. If dad said no, she would never just leave him, especially at Christmas time, and just to pack up and go during the holiday season was very uncommon for her. Andy, put your feet in there. The trip was a great success. Everyone was enjoying the warm December weather and visiting all the tourist sites. And for the moment, Viola was able to forget the pain of losing her son. On the final day of their vacation, the DeBoers were scheduled to visit a local amusement park. But Dave decided to spend the day on his own, exploring L.A. Oh, Dave. Dave. I want to go with you. Can you take me? Mom, I said, no, you're not going to go with me. I'm going to be on a, you know, city buses. You know, I don't worry about myself getting lost, but I don't want to worry about you. Well, moms being moms, uh, she just wouldn't accept that as an answer. We took a bus to downtown because I had never been downtown LA, so that was exciting just to see it, you know. Well, we actually rode the bus all the way downtown, and at that point, the driver said, this is the end of the line, you have to get off here. They had ended up in one of the worst parts of the city, Skid Row. And we were quite terrified at that time because we didn't realize what we gotten ourselves into. Okay, I think we go around this corner right here. I don't like this I know, I know. The underlying fear probably was that I had mom with me. But uh, the fear of what, which bus do I get on next? Where do I go? How do I get back to this point? After asking for directions at a corner store, Viola and Dave set off again. But they were wandering into even more dangerous territory. And then suddenly, they had the shock of their lives. Coming directly at us was one of the many homeless people. It's just a block. Come on, dude. Watch where you step. Even with the uh, beard and the black stocking cap, we both immediately realized that it was Doug. That's Doug. Doug! We said Doug, and uh, no emotion from him at all. Hi. How are you? As if he's met us every day on the street. I have to have lunch. No, 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 you need to come with us. I'll, I'll come back. Go with us now. I'll, I'll come back here. And so he just virtually left us. Doug! 
dog, Mom, dog, let him go. dog, oh no. His reaction was strange to us, but to him, he was doing his routine that he had probably done for several years, obviously. It's 12 o'clock, they serve at the mission at this time. Oh, he's going, he's going, he's going, he's going. I think we just stood there in shock for a while. And we just hoped and prayed that he would be back, because he said he would be. That's good. Doug kept his promise. And now Dave and Viola face their greatest challenge, convincing him to come home. We explained to Doug that we were on vacation and that we would very much like to take him back with us. I have to go with my friends. And at that point, his decision was, no, he was, he was going to stay. This was his home. Doug, look who's here. It's Andrew and Karen's here. Hey, Doug. The following day, Dave brought his family back to the alley, hoping to find Doug and talk him into returning with them. It'll be all right. Just come with us, all right? I'm OK. I know you're OK. The final answer was no. Our Christmas vacation had ended, and we needed to get back. The DeBoers returned to Montana without their long-lost son and brother. Doug remained on the streets, sleeping under cardboard boxes. The former teacher was now just one of the many homeless faces of Los Angeles, but his mother couldn't give up on her son. I went back every vacation that I had, and he didn't want to come home, so what could we do? Four years later, Viola returned to L.A. in the winter, and finally, her prayers were answered. It was so cold, and he had a blanket around him, and he was wet, and he was panhandling. We asked again, why don't you go home with us? We'll get you a ticket. And then he said we could. He said we could get him a ticket, and he came home with us. Dave found his brother a permanent home in a Billings rescue mission, where today he continues to work in the thrift shop. And every Sunday on schedule, Doug meets his family for coffee and pie. It's like the lunch routine he'd kept in Los Angeles all those years, but now he's in the safe and loving arms of his family. The chain of events that led the DeBoer family to Doug on that Christmas 16 years ago continues to astonish them today. The fact that mom was even along on the trip was a miracle. The fact that she was with me was a miracle. The fact that we bumped into him as he was working his way down the street is a miracle. The odds of finding my son in the world's biggest city were, I, I don't see how it happened, other than I know it was a miracle. I know it was.